It's Season 7 of the 15-ish Minute Coffee Chat with Anna and Selena. Selena is the owner of Howley Socially Inspired. She's our Hawaiian rock star who loves all things tech and says coffee is her love language. Anna owns Nomad About. She's the adventure-seeking copywriter who loves a good road trip and has a passion for supporting military spouses and entrepreneurs. Join Anna and Selena weekly to listen in on hot topics that will build your brand, keep you current with best practices, and help you grow as a business owner or entrepreneur. Hey guys, does growing your business make you nervous, excited, or both? Uh, You start off small and suddenly your business is growing, maybe at a rate you didn't expect. Today, we're talking about what mindset you need to thrive during the period of business growth. Join us with guest Yvonne Coombs, co-founder of Operation Deploy Your Dress, a nonprofit that started in the garage and has grown to 12 new locations during today's 15-ish minute coffee chat. Hey, hi, how are you, Anna? Welcome. Oh, no. Anna's frozen. Hi, oh, there she I is. Know. Here I am again. So strange. <laughs> so <laughs> so here's something amazing. Today is the yeah. end of our season seven shows. So we've done 10 more amazing guests. And we're yeah. finishing with Yvonne, which I'm super excited about. Same. Because it's all about business growth. And as an entrepreneur, that's really something you're always thinking about, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how's it going to grow? Should I grow it? How do I grow it? What's yeah. best practices? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And sometimes we just fall into it. And sometimes it's like this like planned approach. And I'm excited to find out which one it was for Yvonne. Maybe a combination of both. You know? Right? No. Planned. Same, girl. Know. Same. Okay. Uh, share with everybody what our call to action question is uh, for today's show. Yeah. Our call to action today. Does growing your business make you nervous, excited, or both. I can tell you as a solopreneur, for me, it is definitely both, right? Mm -hmm. Because growing means more clients, more people. It also means more money. You know, I mean, there's lots of things that go along with it, but you have to be able to handle that growth properly. Absolutely. Absolutely. I read somewhere or heard somewhere it was a speaker. I can't remember who it was. They were like, look, if you're not scared during the growth of your business, you're doing it wrong. (laughs) <laughs> you know, yeah. so I, I totally agree. And I'm really, like I said, I'm really curious. I hope uh, people just kind of throw their comments in, whether it's live or on the replay or in our podcast. Like if you're on Spotify, you can definitely answer this question in there. Um, but I am. I'm really curious to kind of see where everybody's at. I'm, I'm with you, Anna. I'm both. OK, yeah. so um, I guess we should let's bring up. Yvonne. I'm so excited. I just, before I read her bio, I met Yvonne uh, because they are a wonderful organization uh, that does many things. But what the reason why we met was because their organization donated these dresses, gowns, these beautiful gowns to a a uh, cancer organization, uh, the Pink Warrior Angels of Texas that Anna and I were a part of last year. Um, and they, they dress cancer survivors and like you all have to be there. Yvonne has been there twice, like, and they've donated twice. And I think like the feeling you get when you contribute um, and you, and you can just see this, like just transformation of people's feelings, you know, the survivors when they're on stage feeling gorgeous in these gowns and just, uh, it's just something that you have, you have to, you have to witness, you have to participate in some way. And so that's why Yvonne and the organization has continuously, participated you know um yeah it was kind of fun because they also got to address miss america 2020 last year like (laughs) pretty cool it was okay anna go ahead read like a little bit i mean there's so much of yvonne i don't even know where you would start but go ahead why don't you 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 pick at it sure so um yvonne is a steadfast supporter of the military community she brings almost two decades of expertise to operation deploy your dress Um, And basically what that does, it's a 501c3 that redeploys new and gently used formal wear to military dependents. As the chief executive officer and co-founder, 
Yvonne manages the company's overall resources and operations. She understands the critical role that partnerships and collaboration play in effectively and efficiently serving military families. So ODYD was started in December of 2015 when five military spouses at Fort Bliss, that's in Texas, teamed up to host an event that would assist their unit spouses with finding affordable formal wear to ease some of the financial burdens that accompanies going to a military ball. So what became Gan as a casual conversation among friends quickly gathered momentum and received national media attention. And consequently, thousands of gowns, shoes, and formal accessories have arrived from all over the country. Now, fast forward six years, there are 12 military installations with an ODYD around the world. They have weekly openings and more in the works. And through the overwhelming generosity of the American public, ODYD has given away over 16,000 thousand oh. free formal gowns, thousands of accessories and shoes. ODYD has saved military service members and families more than 1.5 million. And that's a conservative estimate. So Yvonne personally, just because she really is an amazing person, right? So mm -hmm. 2020 and 2021, okay. Yvonne was the Armed Forces Insurance Army Spouse of the Year. She was also named the Northern Virginia Heroes at Home Overall Honoree in 2019 for her hard work and dedication to the military community. She loves to show everyone her efforts are more than just about a dress. She works hard to uphold military traditions and encourage camaraderie, build community, and boost morale. She's currently calling Fort Carson, Colorado home. She and her husband, Mike, is a Mike is an active duty army officer, and they have two sons, Jacob and Jackson. So I, mean, I know that was a lot, but what an amazing human being. Like, yeah. And like, you know what? I, I was going to yes. say through parts and I'm like, I can't, no, I know. I got to tell them everything about her. Cause she's I really hear you. And you know what? The one thing about Yvonne is like, sure. You can read this, but literally when you are in her space, I, she just, she raises my, what is that? Serotonin level. I don't know. What is that thing that inside your system, the adrenaline, the whatever, but like she, I just like, we went to dinner when we were doing last year's event and we we're sitting across and I swear it was just kind of like that, like, funny rom-com even though you know we're both married but i just was like i'm obsessed with her like we just like it was like we could talk for hours and well, um let's bring her I, on. Let's right bring her on. let's yeah, do it we can just talk about her for the rest of the okay. year but yeah. let's bring her on. hi yvonne hi yvonne <laughs> I put a hat on. I got cold. <laughs> no, absolutely. This is your day. You can do whatever you want, Yvonne. Whatever this is want. why I had to put pants on, too, because I was cold. <laughs> yeah, when we, when, <laughs> when we originally, um, ha when Yvonne popped into the backstage, she was like, look, guys, I am putting pants on for you all. So this is a big deal. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, well, Yvonne, welcome to our show. I'm so excited. We got we got it to work out. I know you were you were a busy, busy, busy woman human yeah. all the things it's fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> um okay so why don't we why don't we go ahead and just kind of like uh do a coffee cup selfie so we can get it out of the way and then we're just gonna jump in because i know that i i know we have a zillion questions we want to ask you but we'll only keep right. down to two all right guys on three one two three okay and by the way, just one other side note, if you ever meet her son, Jacob, he also is phenomenal, which is how we really got connected. But that's for another day. Maybe we're going to bring Jacob on because he also. Oh, he, he would love it. He yeah. follows in his mom's footsteps of being yep, an does. amazing individual. And he's young. Like you did a, you did good. Thank like, you. Your mama, dude, your mama game is like strong. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to stop. Okay. Can Fake you, until you make it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. Um, let's jump into the first question we have, Anna. I'll let you yeah. take it away. So Yvonne, we were at, we were talking about where we should start with like this whole idea of business growth. And I said, well, the very first thing we have to ask is, did you plan from the start to have Operation Deploy Your Dress grow to be its current size? Like, was this planned? Like in that conversation with those five spouses sitting there talking about the next ball, were you like, huh, someday I'm going to have 12 locations around the world? 
Yeah, we totally were sitting there and said, we're going to take over the world with dresses. You know, <laughs> I, I really wish that I could say that that was the case, but no, we, we plan to do a two day event at Fort Bliss, Texas. Wow. And two days is now the longest two days of my <laughs> life because we're on six years. So. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love that. Yeah. So what, yeah. What point was it where you said to yourself, uh, this is going to keep going because you know, you planned the two day event and then all of a sudden you've got ball, ball gowns getting donated. Right. Mm -hmm. And you could have easily just stopped. You would think so, but ball gowns are like rabbits and they multiply <laughs> whether you want them to or not. So, <laughs> but honestly, I, I think the point that we realized that this wasn't going to be a two day event was, you know, we got some very early on um, national media attention within the first couple of weeks of us saying we were going to do this project. We were on Fox News. Mm -hmm. And um, so when the UPS driver, the FedEx driver, the mail, our post office, you know, delivery person, when they were having to make two and three trips to our house wow. every day to deliver wow. boxes, we knew this wasn't going to take two days to give these dresses away. We thought we were going to collect a couple hundred dresses. And we um, for our first event and our first event, we had collected 3000 dresses before we knew it. And we were like, what? wow, well, this is going to outgrow my basement and Renee's garage really quickly. So we need to figure something else out. So it was, it was early on that we realized that we had to figure something else out, but we really thought we were just figuring something else out for Fort Bliss. We didn't realize that we were figuring something else out to support the military as a whole. Yeah. I, as, yeah, go, sorry, someone, go ahead, Anna. Yeah, I know. I was just going to say as someone with about eight dresses currently in a box waiting to be taken <laughs> right. to our local ODYD, I can see how, I mean, this is a great opportunity because for me, right, as, with as many military balls as I've gone to, I have had to buy a dress at almost everyone until this last one when I came to Fort Hood and I went to ODYD and I picked mm -hmm. out a dress. Oh my Yay. gosh. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a swap. It's like a swap. And I yeah, love absolutely. I loved that. And you just for anyone listening, if you haven't been in one, it is not like you get like two or three options. They are all sizes, all styles. You've got cocktail, you've got formal, you've got <laughs> you've got designer pant suits like that yeah. you can take. I mean, really, and it's got jewelry and bracelets and earrings and high heels and flats and I mean, really just an amazing amount of stuff. I was blown away the first time I walked into one of your shops. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I think sometimes people hear free dress and they think like, wah, wah, wah. Right. I, I, you know, yeah. they come in with very low expectations, which is fine. Like mm -hmm. you can have your low expectations, but give us a shot because yeah. I think people are often very surprised at the selection. And when we tell mm -hmm. them it's yours, it's free, mm -hmm. you get to keep it. They're like, wait, what? Like, yeah. I, I don't have to do anything for this. I'm like, no, no. it's yours. Take it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that I is think exactly this how every time when I would go into the store, you would see others that are there in the shop and they're like, oh, I can have a necklace to go with the dress. Like it's always <laughs> just, there's so much gratefulness. And I have to tell you, like whenever I'm around in the Facebook groups, people are always like, where do you get your ground? And I am not joking everybody is like commenting have you heard about operation deploy your dress and they'll tag your you know what i mean and i'm like yeah i love it it's it really like you just said it is not like a deep dark dungeon basement or, it was or, trust me it was when we first started <laughs> we're very right. one gives you a flashlight when you enter it says good luck that's not how it is it's like a speakeasy and you have to know the password <laughs> to come down and you may or may not come out alive and, no you know. no i bet i bet um it so really definitely. is a very fun boutique shopping yeah. experience yeah you know and I'm that's and that's what we wanted it to be right yeah. we didn't want it to be like a bunch of racks in somebody's garage and mm -hmm. we wanted there to be the experience around it the experience of military spouses lifting up military spouses and other military family members and you yeah. know just we didn't want there to ever be a stigma around getting a dress from operation to play your yeah. dress that's why it's open to all military id card holders mm -hmm. and it's just supposed to be fun yeah fun happy uplifting um yeah. i will just mention because i know that you recently launched which i absolutely love is like the odyd bridal aspect of it which i was like this is perfect like that is perfect especially for those new you know, anyway, I know it's not about the store itself, but about the business mind. But I just really the concept that you guys 
that it became what it became is just, yeah. you know, I mean, over 16,000 free gowns, that's 16,000 people that you have made happy that have like felt special and felt amazing. And I mean, that's well beyond just giving a, a dress, right? It's kind of changing one's feelings and man, yeah. do we you know, need that? I was going to say, we, we've come across many times that spouse that wasn't going to be able to go to the ball because, you know, the very Cinderella story, right? Like, right. I, I got to stay home and watch the kids because we can't afford for both of us to go because, yeah. you know, everything, the dress, the ticket, the babysitter, and the dress is often a big expense. Yeah. And um, to justify for, for a young military family or sometimes any military family to justify spending two, three hundred dollars on a yeah. dress, that's the difference between food for the their family mm -hmm. and, you know, going to a ball. And so they have to make that decision and you know, that's not, that's not fair and it's not, um, it's not fun. And it, it really, um, I think can put a damper on the way that that family member sees their military experience. So if we can help them have, you know, have that uplifting military experience and connect more into the military community that they're going to be a part of, hopefully for a very long time, then we're happy to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, we can get into this at the end, but just to be clear, anyone can donate a dress Yeah. and yep. military card, military ID card holders are ones who can benefit from getting a dress. Yep. So the dresses come from all over the country and it, it, we found that a lot of people, a lot of our dresses were coming from non-military connected people because mm -hmm you know, they have these dresses sitting in their closet that they're never going to wear again, but they don't want to take it to a thrift store or, you know, donate it that way because right. they do have some emotional connection tied into it. Yeah. Um, but then when they hear about us, it's it's kind of a way that they see, okay, you know, I've always say I support the troops and I can put a sign in my front yard or whatever, but this is really a way of us supporting the military. And so they'll box yeah. up their dresses and mail them to us. They'll reach out and say, hey, can we, can we do a dress drive for you guys? Can we, yeah. you know, we, I don't have any dresses, but I found some dresses on sale at, Nordstrom. So I bought you some, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so it's, it's awesome. It's amazing. The support that we get. Oh I man. No, it, again, it's right. It's the act of just kind of what that dress does to that person that gets to put it on. I Absolutely. mean, Anna and I went to, right. Yes. What an awesome initiative. Um, what Anna and I, when we went to try and we were in the dressing room together, we were giggling. We, you know, the experience for us was like, you know, like, she's like, you look amazing. I'm like, no, you look amazing. And just the feeling of like, you don't, you know, you walk out and you're just so, you know, uh, when we did our event, like Yvonne's uh, Fort Hood chapter was so amazing. Uh, we actually were able to have like the cancer survivors come and pick a dress and have a whole experience. And I tell you what, when we were all leaving there, we were crying. Everybody was just so excited and happy. And again, it's, it's not about the dress, but I just, even the business mindset of just like what, what, what you guys do. And is yeah. that part of something that you guys kind of like, it, obviously it's part of your, one of your pillars of just kind of like, not just about the dress, it's. You know, one of the things that we didn't realize whenever we were going, I mean, we didn't realize a lot of things when we were going into this because this is our accidental baby that we had. <laughs> but one of the things that we didn't that we didn't realize was um, the volunteers that come in to work with us was that that business and kind of um, those tangible um um, experiences that they, that they were getting to a lot of times military, military, um, spouses, they don't necessarily have the time for a job, right? So there, there are, t there are periods of their time while being a military spouse that they're like, I can't work right now. I have young kids that aren't in school or we're only here for six months or whatever they decide, whatever reason they decide to not have a job, but they don't want to have that gap in their resume. And so this is something they can come and try out. Maybe they get some new some new skills that they didn't know that they that, that they had, you know, they're getting to run a shop to manage a store, yeah, you know, yeah. to manage inventory. We have some, we have people who are doing our marketing and our social media. And so they're getting to, they're still getting that work experience mm -hmm. without having to have that 40 hour job. Yeah. And so in, and we're getting so many talented military spouses that come that come to us and say, hey, how can we help? And we're like, what can you do? You, you probably do something we don't even know we need help with. So tell us, you know. Yeah. So it's just it's fun to grow organically because somebody will come and say, hey, I have this skill and I think that I can that I can really benefit you guys. And we're like, giddy up. Let's go. Let's try it out. So it's 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 just a you know, we there may be five co-founders, but this has really been grown by a 
no pun intended, army of military spouses. I mean, it's not just army spouses. We've had spouses from all branches of service, but it's really been grown by a, you know, just a bunch of military spouses, which is just amazing. You know what I'm hearing, Yvonne and Anna, tell me if I'm wrong, right? You have to be open to allow other people to help you so that you can grow the business or that you like the accidental baby. But if you shut too many people out, you know, you're, you almost limit what the baby could be become, right? You know how they say like it takes a village whenever we're raising our children and stuff. Yes. This is seriously our accidental baby that we've literally let the village raise. <laughs> <laughs> it's done so yeah. well. Yeah. So, yeah. So, what, so this is interesting because, well, not interesting, but this is a perfect lead in. We've actually almost yeah. pretty much answered our second question, which is what is important for the mindset of you and your team as this growth occurred? And what you, I mean, basically what you said is, being open to skill sets and people that, you know, are going to come and go and you know, they're going to come and go, you know, they're not going to dedicate the next 10 years of their lives to this one shop because it's unlikely they're going to be there that long because most of them are military families. Absolutely. Um, is there anything you would add to this as far as like the mindset? You said five co-founders and the majority of your team in that sense then becomes volunteers. We're actually an all volunteer force. Every single one of us are volunteers on this on this team, um, and I think that I think that for also it's just managing expectations. I mean, we really kind of let this ball roll and run alongside it and guided it where it needed to be guided, but um, we've not we've not really put a lot of huge expectations on ourselves. We've just you know kind of looked, looked at the road ahead and been like, okay, something's going to happen here. How are we going to tackle that? And so, I mean, not, not every business can operate that way. You know, some businesses have to be way more proactive. We are very proactive in some aspects, but we have to, we have to allow ourselves that wiggle room to just, you know, react when we need to react as well. And, and like you said, in bringing on different people and because we all come from so many di different walks of lives yeah. that you never know what kind of ideas and um, resources somebody's going to bring into the team. Yeah. Okay. I just, I, one question. Well, 10 million questions okay, <laughs> with, with your co-founders, there's five, right? And we all know, I mean, Anna and I have little, like, I don't like that. You don't like it. I don't like it. But we, we always have a common ground where we come back to like, what advice do you give for when you have, you know, a group of you that have to work together and you, you know, the goal is to grow. Like, how do you guys do that? How do you do that without like, like, you know, walking away from each other, <laughs> you know? Um, I think it's just like a marriage and communication. Yeah. Communication is the key, right? We, mm -hmm. we talk about everything. Um, and even when I think, I think just personally, I, I think personally, even whenever it's something that you don't quite think like, mm, I don't know that I would necessarily choose this. You kind of have to have to um, give it up to the majority sometimes and just be supportive no yeah. matter what, right? Like we are a team and we're more than a team. We're a family and we are raising this baby together. And we all know that everybody's intentions are for the good of this baby. And so even if it's not something that you would have normally chosen, you know that they're not trying to throw your baby off a bridge. So, so yeah. let's just go with it. And, right. um, and, <clears throat> and just know that everybody's intentions for this, for this organization are good intentions. I think that's so uh, such an important mindset for, I mean, you're one of the leaders of the organization, right? I mean, you're the CEO, you're the co-founder, one of the co-founders. So, but that idea that, you know, nobody's trying to submarine it. And so you're willing to listen and hear them out and not have the, I have one vision and this is the way it's going to go kind of thing. And I think that's such an important concept. Like, just in terms of being a great leader. So kudos. I mean, yeah. It's not always easy. I'll tell you, it's yeah. not always easy, but yeah, right. you have, you have to be that way. You have to be flexible and you, if it's a team, then you really have to treat it like a team. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So this kind of leads us directly into our next question even, and we've kind of like talked around this and you're, because your setup is all volunteer, this is kind of a, you know, <clears throat> this question doesn't super fit like exactly, but so you the role of each of your team members, when you're growing at this rate, I can imagine there's a million moving parts. So how do you delegate that out when you have a volunteer force where someone's like, can't do it this week, I'm too tired, 
or we're moving in PCSing this month, or you know, whatever those conflicts that come into play with this group of um, people that are supporting your organization. Like, do you have specific roles where she's in charge of this or he's in charge of that and all that? Or tell us. We do. More. We do have specific roles, um, but our lanes are pretty easy to blur together a little bit. And the team is just really good at if somebody says, hey, I'm going to be on vacation for two weeks or I'm PCSing. And so I'm going to be out of the loop for the next three weeks. Um, we we shift plates very, very well. And people will pick stuff up and sometimes never give it back. Sometimes they pick stuff up and we say, you know what, this might be better for us just to find somebody that solely focuses on this plate. And it just, it really, it actually helps us. I think that um, people have their own lives and are constantly moving because then it forces us to look at what's on everybody's plate and see how we can shift. And if we need to shift more often than if we were a more, uh, than we, if we were a less transient group of um, volunteers working on this. Yeah. <sighs> I just, I, I just, it, 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 it's inspiring just to know, like, you know, that you started here and then you're here and it's not over, right? It's like, I hope not. Yeah, no, <laughs> I just can't imagine it not being, you know, I, man. I, I mean, we really hope that this is something that, you know, we, a, a kind of a legacy that we leave to military families that, you know, mm -hmm. that younger spouses will come in, start volunteering. And eventually that's who will take yeah. this over. And, um, you know, we will always, we will always love Operation to Play Your Dress and be a part of Operation to Play Your Dress. But mm -hmm. at some point we'll have to step aside and let some, let somebody else come in and bring in their ideas and, yeah. you know, take this, you know, maybe even in other directions that we can't even think about right now. So, okay. So I, I, I know we're nearing the end of our time, but now yeah. I'm really curious, like, are you grooming a younger generation of military spouses to kind of take over this leadership role right now? Like, are you thinking that far into the future? Um, so we are not actively intentionally grooming anybody, mm -hmm. but um, we absolutely think about that all the time and, mm -hmm. and know that as people come on, you know, <clears throat> somebody, somebody may start off as, as you know, a shop manager or a volunteer that's sweeping our floors in one of our shops, you know, cause we have people that that's what they do. They're like, I love to clean. I'll come and clean the floors. You know, that may be where they start. And by the time that it's time for us to step aside and hand this off to somebody else, they may be the ones running the whole show. Yeah. And then, okay. Last question for you. And then I promise we can like, you know, move on. I but love it. <laughs> So now that you've experienced this growth and now that you've seen where this can go, now do you have a picture in your head of where you want to take this? Like, are we going 50 locations or, you know, I mean, every military base? I have said from the beginning that I want to be on as many military installations as possible so that we can help as many military families as we can. I mean, that's I, I know that the support of dresses will always be there and that the um the desire to help this organization will be there because it's just a feel good story. You know, there's, there's just positive energy around it. So yeah, I mean, as long as, as long as installations still want us coming around, we are happy to continue to see how we can put, how we can put shops there and support their <clears throat> communities. This needs to be at every single installation. I can Definitely. remember being at Fort Polk, Louisiana and not really having a place to shop for something, it was Amazon. Mm -hmm. And if anybody's been to Fort Polk, you know, if you've <laughs> been, been in the military, or you have to drive a half hour, but that's not even like a real dress shop. It's just like, you know what I mean? And so, yeah. uh, um, like I said, I, I think there's so many layers to this. It's not just a place to get, but it just gives a lot of sense of purpose, like you said, and it helps build skills for those that, um, you know, are in between employment the, uh, whatever those gaps. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I could ask yeah. a zillion questions. Sorry. Go ahead, Anna. Yeah. Are we, are we at the no. end? Should we yeah. just tell people where to find? No, yeah, we're at the end. I think right now we're just going to have people connect with you and ODYD. Yeah. And so Yvonne, can you tell us how people can find you and find your organization? Absolutely. So we are on Facebook. We have operation to play your dress, um, Facebook groups. We have just look up Operation to Play Your Dress. And then also everywhere that we have a location, they have their own Facebook group. So Fort Irwin, Operation to Play Your Dress, Fort Bragg, Operation to Play Your Dress. If you just go, if you just search that in the um, Facebook search engine, you'll be able to find them. We're on 
LinkedIn. Um, we're on Instagram, ODYD1. Um, we are on Pinterest, especially with our bridal program. And then our website is operation dress.org, which will link you to all of those as well. I mean, there's no reason not to find her. Or no, if, the organization. You, if you can't find me, you're not looking. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and for people that want to donate, is the best place to go your website possibly? Yes. Yeah. If you go to the website, there's a locations button that takes you to a map that shows you all the locations. You click on the map, you click on the location, it'll pull up an address and um, also instructions on how to donate. That's awesome. Okay. I Wait, hold on, guys. I just want to bring up, I want to bring up the website. I just need a... Just hold on one second, just because it's like, we just want you to know where you're going to, where you're going to look. So let me just stop share this for one second. And then I'm going to, they're like, oh, what's going on guys? Um, okay. Chrome tab. There we go. Okay. It's such a gorgeous, it's so, it's such a pretty, I mean, it's so easy. I mean, right. Like, <laughs> here we go. You can't go wrong. Okay. I'm going to just, there we go. Okay. So you're saying right here. Yep. Okay. Look, I mean, you just click over. And you just, well, boy, that's easy, right? Um, so if you go to locations, if you click yeah. on locations, a oh, map yes. will come up. Yes. Oh, you guys, look, look. I mean. And then any of those will show you like an address. Yes. I mean, and I love, was this, was the Germany your like last one that you just opened or? No, Fort Bragg was actually the last one, but oh. Germany was the only one that we've opened overseas so far. Oh, kudos that must have been like such a big like yes like this is amazing yes. you know yes um but look you guys so let's like help i don't know how we help you but look whoever's listening we want to add more thumbtacks to this map because <laughs> absolutely I, it's just gonna it's just gonna make sense it just makes sense so you it know really um does. okay okay sorry back to the back to the thing hold on <laughs> I'm like, I can do this. I can do this. Um, okay. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. All right. So again, that's where you can find Yvonne at all the wonderful places. Let's move on to Anna. I'm going to let you talk about this. What is our toolkit? What are we, why are we talking about this? Uh, so our toolkit today is the Honoring All Military Ball. Um, presented by uh, the Veteran Spouse Project and their presenting sponsor is Corvius. And so the Veteran Spouse Project is a nonprofit 501c3 that supports active duty retired and veteran military spouses um, through generations. I'm talking if you're a if you're a Vietnam vet era military spouse, if you're a World War II era military spouse and you are looking for a community or something like that, this is the organization for you. They're pretty darn amazing. Um, they do a lot of expressive and creative arts types things. So theater workshops, writing courses, um, creative art uh, courses, classes, that kind of stuff. But their big fundraiser each year is the Honoring All Military Ball. And this military ball is not your typical military ball in the sense that there's a location and it's only for military families. It is open to military and non-military, and they're doing it virtually. And so it's kind of up to you what you want to make this experience. But because if you have an operation to deploy your dress in your location, we would encourage you to get your experience tickets um, it comes with this cute box full of goodies to make your yeah. night perfect. Um, they give you everything that you need for fallen soldier tables, which is something you're going to find at a traditional military ball. Um, the, the grog bowl makings. So you're going to make your own grog bowl at home, uh, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, whatever you want, depending on who's going to be there with you. You can dress up or dress down. We've got playlists, all sorts of things. And then, of course, all the ceremonial portions of it that are offered virtually for you and your family and friends to experience. So we just want to encourage you to go and get your tickets. It's an awesome organization. Um, they do amazing things. They're totally transparent in terms of like the funds that they receive. It all goes directly back into the military spouse community and supporting military spouses just through all the things 
that military spouses go through. So I'm going to drop the link into the comments and we would love to have you support. Selena and I are sitting on the committee and supporting this organization in that way this year. And so um, we've been doing some things, just helping prep for the Honoring All Military Ball. And we hope that you can come and join us. Yeah. So again, this gives you a good reason to head over to your nearest ODYD, get a dress, go through that experience and then go through this experience. I mean, it's a match made in heaven. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, absolutely. Okay. Let me click over and where are we at? Oh, and I'll let you do our, our tip for the, the day from Caitlin Eldridge. Sure. So um, our tip today is if you are considering long-term disability insurance, don't ever deduct your premiums because if you do, it creates a taxable income where there didn't have to be a taxable income. And nobody wants taxable income when you don't have to have taxable income. Okay. You don't want that. Yeah, so use your after tax dollars to pay for your disability insurance. Okay. That's that's the basic lowdown of what Caitlin's doing. <laughs> Thank Got you, it. Caitlin. Caitlin Thank Albert. you. Yes. All right. This okay. is Anna's favorite part. She's at the end. This is your part, Anna. This is you. Talking. I'm the like, it's like the end of the show. And it's just me out here. Like, <laughs> so, so it's funny because I had on here, Yvonne, we had to switch Yvonne's date around. So I have on here next week, join us for it, but we don't have anyone for you to join us for right now. This is yeah. the end of season seven. We are yeah. going to be getting ready for season eight, which will start in um, just like about March. five weeks ish. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, really darn soon. And we have yet another amazing lineup of guests mm -hmm. that we are currently in the process of confirming. So yeah. thank you so much for joining us, Yvonne. Thank you so yeah. much for being our last guest and such, I mean, you're fantastic on camera. You're, you, you know, just so good. I know. Well, you thank you for having me. Walking sunshine. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is just like the whole outfit is complete for you. No, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for like being able to come back and like do this. Cause I was like, oh, I just love her. I want her to be on the show. And no, um, I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't miss it. I'm so glad. No, thank you. I am. I am too. So you guys, um, thank you again for being part of season seven with Anna and I thank you again to Yvonne for helping us close out the uh, season. Um, if you're listening to this, you know, on your podcast or whatever, just give it a like and the subscribe, all the things you're supposed to do to just help all support our very tiny little show we have in our pocket of the universe. So, you know, um, <laughs> but we will see you in season eight, but yeah. Thank bye you. everybody. Bye. bye.